cow or cattle. So already make a moo noise. Okay, that's a very angry cow, son. All right. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 24, And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Now, first of all, I want to point out here that cattle here is a type of, it's not specifically the cow, a lot of things. The word for here for cattle is behemoth, also where we get behemoth from. All right, so behemoth, which can mean cows and sheep and domesticated animals here. But we're going to we're going to specifically look at the cow, okay, which is which is different. Uh, but cattle includes all of those type things. So we're we're going to look at par, which is the cow. We're not going to look at that specifically. But here we have a cow. He's wondering what uh, what's going on here. All right, a healing coo. Here we have, uh, we have this one here. That's a weird cat. All right. Or this one even. So we have all these different kinds of cows. Okay, so we have the cow. All right, so here I'm going to ask you a couple of questions here. So what have all these got in common? We've got Frisian, the Jersey, we've got Hereford. And we get Hovis. They get milk. No, they're all different kinds of breeds. Oh, really? <laughs> 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 Hovis is a breed. <laughs> you know, same with Warburton's. Right? <laughs> That's an old joke, but I just had to throw it in there. <laughs> so I like the, the picture. All right. So let's look at the cow. All right, so we got adult males are called what? Bulls. Everybody knows that. Adult females are called? Cows. Cows. Young males, which are castrated, are usually called? Cows. No. Cows. Bullocks. Bullocks. All right. Young females are called? Bullets. No. <laughs> Bullets. No. No. Yeah, all baby cows are called calves. But a young female, before she's had a calf, would be called, you know this. Is it a what is it? It is a heifer. Well done. A heifer. Heifer. Yeah, just, that's a great word, heifer. All right, it's almost as good as ointment. But <laughs> and we have what are bred as working cattle. These are bred to, to work, so they'll be used for pooling things and whatnot. What do you think they're called? Oxen. Oxen. All right. They're specifically bred for that purpose. Right, so an oxen is a cow, but it's it's some of them have been special, specifically bred for the purpose of pulling things and plowing, and they're usually bigger than bulls, and they're bred for that purpose. They're stronger as well. So let us look at what some things the cows do. Now the cow is a very very sociable animal, and they form close friendship with preferred individuals. So they have cow friends. Right, they have little within their herd they have little friends that are friends and they don't do well if they're separated from their friends you see they, they like their friends and they like to have their friends and they, they can have long-lasting friendships with these friends but they also can dislike individuals and they've been known to hold grudges for a very very long time so if you go up and kiss a cow that doesn't like to be kissed next time it comes back it'll say nah nah I don't like you all right, that's just nasty. All right, so but cows, if you're mean to a cow, the cow will remember it, all right, and uh, he won't he won't do won't do what you're asking them to do. They do prefer to sleep close to family members, and they do so in rank structure, all right? Just like the chickens have a pecking order, cows have a, a mooing order. I guess I don't know what you call it, but they do. Um, they'll they'll sleep that, and you can see that with the chickens. You see the ones on the top. Are the, the, the top of the, the pile and the ones in the bottom are, are down on the pecking order. And that's the way it comes from. Cows do the same thing. Now the Bible says, um, oh dearie me, it didn't do what it was supposed to do. Um, okay, the Bible, can, you, um, can you stop that and, and take that off there? That shouldn't be on there. Just go to the... Um, you have to close the presentation. 
Yeah, and then do that slide, and then just click on it and, and do an animation or something like that. Just click on click on animations. Next to slideshow at the top, and then oh no, it's supposed to. Why did that not do that? That is weird. Okay, try it again. Try from current slide. It should have done. There we go. Huh. Okay. There we go. Right. I like to sleep close and flat. The Bible says, The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass the master's crib. But Israel doth not know my people, nor doth consider. So the Bible says, The ox knoweth his owner. So the Bible tells us that, and cows do in fact know that. And it's been studied and shown that if you name a cow, and you give it a name and you treat it well, it can give a lot more milk than just a regular cow. And cows do know their numbers. If you can call a cow, you can teach a cow a number and teach it its name and it will come. And I know this because we've seen it, we've seen it done. Um, you know, on the farm there in Gia, they, they, they teach the cows their numbers and the cow recognizes number. And say number 12 and 12 will come forward and number six, six will come forward. It's quite, the cows are very, very, very smart things. Now, the females are very devoted mothers, and they can even be found to walk miles trying to find their calves. They'll walk because they want to, you know, when you take the calf away from its mother, you can hear them all night. And they will walk for miles to try and find the calf. So much so that, um, that, like I said, they can walk for miles and miles and miles to find their calf. Now, cows are very curious, and they will investigate absolutely anything. That's why when you walk through a field, the cows will just stand looking. But as soon as your back is turned, they're like right there. <laughs> it's really funny. But as soon as you turn back around, the... it's like playing a game. You turn back around. Turn. <laughs> you know, I always think it's funny. I always laugh at the tourists when, when they go through the, the cows and the cows start coming towards them because they want to know who you are and what you're doing. You're in my field. Why are you in my field? Get out of my field, you know? And uh, it's really funny. I always, I always find it funny when, when they do that. And then there'll be one that gets really bold and start running towards you, and you go, hmm, and they go, hmm, and turns around and, and jumps around. <laughs> I love cows. They're so much fun. Did you know that cattle actually almost have 360 degrees of vision? All right? it's, not, it's not quite that, but they can see almost all the way around. They have a blind spot in the front and a blind spot in the back. So you can't really sneak up on a cow. Unless you're directly behind it or directly in front of it, but no. So, but uh, you know, if you if you if you like snuck, snuck down and then popped up in front of the cow, he might not be able to see you. All right, <laughs> you will. Like, ah, so yeah, pretty much. So, and a cow can hear sounds. I don't know how they found this, but they maybe asked a cow, said, "Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now?" Can you hear me now? I don't know. But a cow can hear sounds of five miles away, supposedly. I've never asked a cow, and I've never shouted on a cow. But um, maybe they can. But so, so I'm told. And they can hear lower and higher frequencies than humans. So they can hear far beyond our capabilities of, of sound. So you can call them. And the, the cows are so intelligent. I know that um, my great uncle would... Um, would send the dog to get the cows, and the dog would go, and the cow, the dogs would the dog would bark, and the cows would come down. But also, cows get so much. There's so much creatures of habit that they will come and appear at the gate at milking time. Mm -hmm. You know, you can leave the gate open, and they will stay in the field all day. But come milking time, they will make their way down and be at the gate. You sometimes don't even have to go get them. They're amazing creatures. Cows are um, when they want to be. That is. But each cow has, again, they have a pecking order or milking order that the, the cows will come in in their order and they know which stall is theirs. And they will come in in order and go into the stall and then the next, they'll go out and the next ones will come in, go into the stalls and they'll be mil milked. So they all have it and they know. And if they have a new cow and that new cow tries to go into the wrong stall, oh, it knows about it. It gets told off very, very quickly. They're amazing creatures. The average dairy cow can consume about 100 pounds of food and 40 gallons of water per day. And we thought Jordan was bad. 
You know, a hundred pounds of food and 40 gallons of water. It's like a whole bathtub. Per cow. Per cow. And she will produce around 4.5 gallons of milk per day. All right, four point. She. <laughs> Did you really ask why she? Mm, okay, so she, the female cows, not the bull. What about the other one? Yeah, nice one. All right. She will produce around 4.5 gallons of milk per day. It's about 25 some liters. Now, if you do the math, the, the, the farmer gets about 10p per liter. Right, so about 25 liters a day, 10p a liter, about £2.50 per cow, per milk. It's hardly worth it. It's really not. Right? If you're grass-fed, obviously the grass is free and it can grow. But then you've got all the feed, all the everything else. It's, it is pretty ridiculous when you think about what the, what the farmers get for the milk compared to what you pay for it in the shop. So anyway, that's my little soapbox thing. So she will, she will produce 4.5 gallons of milk per day and between 10 to 45 gallons of saliva because cows have a lot of saliva, all right? It is pretty nasty. And also up to 400 liters of gas. Very gassy, cows are. Right. Yeah, that's right. Try to blame the cows, and they would produce basically methane. So sometimes what they've done is they've tried to, you know, um, capture cow farts, and um, and process it into methane. Basically, yeah. But they do. They've, there are some places that have got it, the cows inside, and they capture the gas, and they um, and they refine it, and they burn it. They cook the food on it. You know. So, it's, but hey, it's a natural source of methane. So you're cooking. You, you people say you're cooking with gas, cooking with cow fart. You know, I wonder if you could light. No, let's not. Um, <laughs> it's <an> instant barbecue. <laughs> All righty. The average cow will spend, now a lot of people differ on this one, but I guess it depends on the cow and depends where it's at. A lot of average out the cows spend about eight hours eating, about eight hours chewing the cud, and about eight hours sleeping. Some say some cows, four to eight hours. It just depends who you, who you ask. All right. So this is, this is what they do um, throughout the day. It's the average. And so some more, some less. But, uh, but in, this, in this kind of way. So they will we'll lay around for, for hours just chewing the cud. But I'm not going to get into the, the whole process of the ruminants and stuff tonight. I think it's a bit beyond what we're actually doing. But it is a marvelous thing how, how they can process their food. And maybe we will look at that at some time, but, but not tonight. So they have no upper front teeth. Right? They've got other teeth are all the back here, but they've got bottom front teeth, but they've got no upper front teeth. And... Uh, and they, you know, I've been bitten by a cow, and I was quite glad they didn't have any upper front teeth. But anyway, <laughs> so lost that nail right there. But um, my own fault. But anyway, <laughs> so no, I didn't feel like that. Right. No. Um, they use their tongues to rip up the grass. If you ever watched a cow, you can watch them stick his tongue out, rip the grass, and, and pull it up like that. And uh, they use their back teeth for chewing. All right, so here we have the head of a cow. And you can see there are the front teeth. Right, there's the front teeth and no front teeth. It's just a hard palate there. And then here is the back teeth that they use for chewing. And when they regurgitate, they chew everything up and re-swallow it again. All right. So you can imagine how that fits into a cow's head. Right. Pretty cool. So the cow, the little cow here. All right. A cow will produce her first calf when she's around two years old. And the calves are fed milk until they're about eight to nine weeks old. And the milk, they need to have the milk because it contains antibodies that protect the new calf, right? And so the, 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 the new calves must be fed on, on milk to produce that. A lot of uh, commercial farmers don't, they make, they have, you know, um, uh, substitute milk, but the best thing is to let it um, have its mother's milk or especially the cow's milk for, for those eight to nine weeks. 
And uh, but, but before, but about two months before the cow actually gives birth, she will go dry. In other words, she stops producing milk. And this is to enable the calf to grow. And then when she's, she, she's, she gives birth, then she'll be freshened up and she'll start producing milk again. And, but a cow has to continually have calves to keep the milk going and keep it, keep it fresh. You usually have a calf every year to keep the dairy herd going. And of course, you then sell the calves or you know, increase your herd. Depending if it's a male cow, you might put it out into the, uh, if it's taken after the bull, um, you would put it out to, to, to the pasture and it would become a beef cow. And uh, if it was a, a female, chances are it would be a Frisian taken after the mother, and so it would join the herd. And if you get a Frisian bull, which is quite rare, um, you know, you, you'd uh, be quite, uh, quite fortunate, to, to, uh, quite blessed to get that. So what else do we know about the cow? A cow does not forget its calf. Right? And you can see this because it's quite common to see a cow licking their own grown calves if they remain part of their herd. Please don't, Sharpa, don't, don't lick your son. Okay? Um, anyway, uh, and don't you wink at anybody either. But, but the, cow, the, the cow will recognize his calf even when it's grown and will, 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 can, will often be seen licking its grown, grown calf. So it knows them and it remembers them. So it, it kind of makes you think, oh, it's really a shame to have taken the calves away from the cows now. You know, kind of, kind of sick and twisted. Because, <laughs> you know, you wonder if that cow is thinking, oh, well, I wonder where they went to, you know. But, um, but anyway, so, mm. <laughs> The oldest cow on record was 49 years old. And cows don't usually last that long. But, um, but the oldest cow on record was 49 years old, and she produced 39 calves in her lifetime. Wow. All right, talk about barefoot and pregnant. Yep. Barehoofed and pregnant. All right, her, her name was called Big Bertha. All right. The heaviest calf ever born live was 225 pounds and was a British Frisian. All right. That's a big calf. Now, gestation for a cow is just like much like a human. It's nine months. So as long as you're pregnant, the, the cows will be pregnant at the same time as well. What else do you know? <laughs> cows share 80% DNA with humans. So you could say that the, the cow is 80% human, or you could say you're 80% cow. So, but they also share it with, with rats and things like that. The thing is, the DNA genes are very similar through across the board. It shows us it's a common designer. It doesn't show us that we're 80% cow. It just shows that we have common building blocks. But you can look at a cow and look at a human and say, there's a lot of differences there. Okay, they have tongues, they have eyes, they have brain, they have, you know, but we're not ruminants. You see, so there's a big, in that 20%, there's a massive difference in those things. There are, are more than 800 breeds of cattle. And I certainly can't name them all. I can name a lot, but I can't name 800. I could make some up, but... <laughs> Did you know a cow can walk upstairs, but it can't walk downstairs? Right? Its legs don't bend that way to be able to make, let it walk down stairs. But it can walk up, but it can't walk down. That's why it needs a ramp to walk down. Now, let's look at some famous cows. No, it's not going to go bad. There are no politicians will be named during, during this lesson. Okay? This is called the high cow. All right. <laughs> the markings make it look like it says high. People drive by and take pictures of it. It's a real cow. No, uh, it's not been photoshopped. Is it alive? Well, in that picture it is. Uh, or they might have stuffed it by now, you know. I mean, I mean, maybe the farmer's got a rug that, that you know, it's, it kind of it says hi instead of welcome. It says hi, <laughs> all right? And we got the taraku, all right? If you if you're from Scotland, you should have heard of the taraku, uh, the taraku. Oh, you can Google that one. You've seen the taraku. It's a statue, all right? It's in Taraf, in Taraf, taraku way up north. Basically. The, the government imposed uh, a whole thing on national insurance contributions and made them, you know, mandatory. And the farmers up there said they refused to pay them because they, they, they couldn't, they weren't using the health service 
because they couldn't get days off to be sick. When they were sick, they just had to continue working. So they refused to pay it. And so uh, this one man was, was basically sued and he was told to pay the fine and pay the excess. Well, he paid the fine but refused to pay the, the um, what do you call it, the outstanding balance. And so they came uh, to, re to, 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 to possess his stuff to claim it. But the problem is they needed local people to help move the stuff. And of course, the local people were on his side, so they wouldn't move the stuff. So then they decided they would take his cow. And so they took his cow because that's the only thing that they could move. As so they took it to market and they went to auction it. But the two auctioneers in town were also friends and wouldn't do it. <laughs> so then came another auctioneer from as well, and the townspeople just got together and started throwing fruit and everything at him. So they end, ended up taking him to Aberdeen to be auctioned, who then uh, another farmer bought him. And then the townsfolk were, were then raised the money and bought the cow back, bought the, the taraku back. And um, that's why the statue is there now uh, to say, here, here knew the taraku, you know, uh, and stuff. So, but there's also, there's Miss, Mrs. O'Leary's cow that supposedly started the Great Fire of Chicago, but um, it's since been exonerated that it wasn't the cow that uh, it was, uh, it was made. So there's a lot of famous cows that you can look up. And like I said, uh, we're not going to mention any names. But cows in the Bible, let's look at cows in the Bible. Well, we have, um, we have the seven fat cows and we have the seven lean cows. What were they? It was Pharaoh's dream that saved the people because of Joseph's interpretation about the seven good years and the seven years of famine. So we have a very famous instance where, where God used cows in a dream to show that. We have the bullocks that were used in the sacrifice, right? These were used and uh, as well as, as the red heifer as well, which I'll look at in a minute. So bullocks were used as part of the sacrifices in the Old Testament. And we even find that cow's cheese was eaten in the Bible. In Second Samuel, we always think of goat's cheese in the Bible and goat's milk. But we find here that in First Second Samuel 17, verse 29, it talks about um, honey and butter and sheep and cheese of kine, which kine is another word for goose. You see? So we even have cheese in the Bible. Now that we have two bullocks were chosen uh, to see who was God on Mount Carmel, right? Uh, I just said choose two. You pick one. You dress it. I'll pick one. I'll take the other one, and uh, we'll dress it. We'll see who is God. And that's in First Kings chapter eighteen. So again, we see another instance of coups there. In Psalm fifty verse ten, it says, "For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills." So God owns all of these things, all the cattle. And even in um, Psalm 69, verse 30, it says, I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. This also shall please the Lord better than an ox or bullock that hath horns and hoofs. So again, the Bible tells us that the praise is better than sacrifice. You know, and, and God always wants obedience and praise moreover than our sacrifices. Because people can sacrifice all they want to, but if they don't have praise and they don't have obedience, the sacrifice means nothing. You know, Saul learned that the hard way. He wanted to keep things to sacrifice for the Lord, but, but Samuel said, no, God wants, God doesn't want sacrifice without obedience. God wants obedience first, and then sacrifice. He wants faithfulness and praise in these things. In the Ten Commandments, we find the ox, and, and uh, it says, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. So here, again, even in the Ten Commandments, God talks about these things. So, we have this red heifer. What's the big deal with the red heifer? Well, the Bible tells us... Oops, it says, This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord had commanded, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring thee a red heifer without spot, wherein is no blemish, and upon which never came yoke. And so they're looking for a, a red heifer, so it has to be completely red, no spots, right? No white marks, completely red, and uh, without spot, without blemish, so it can't have any skinned problems any spots or warts, and uh, which never had a yoke upon it. In other words, it didn't have, um, it was never used for plowing or any of the like, and it never been used. And that's what they were to take and to sacrifice for, clean, for cleanliness, 
Paul even mentions about that in the scriptures. And so for the, 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 the Jews today, they're looking for a red heifer to be able to start the building of the next temple. But they thought they had found one, but when it was examined, it was not to be so. But again, the priests have added on other things. With every, how, every, every hair in the cow has to be straight to signify that our yoke has never come upon it. Well, I don't, don't see God thinking anything about hairs in this way. So they're adding things on. So they may have had a good red heifer, but by their own standards, they've taken it away. I mean, they'd even almost build causeways to where the heifer could walk so it wouldn't walk next to a graveyard. They would have even children um, be born and raised away in segregation, isolation, to where they would be the ones that would collect the water for to mix with the ashes to, to, to sprinkle and things like that. So they've gone over the top in all these things they've done. Like I said, we were talking on Sunday about yoke of bondage. That the, the, what man, God never intended his law to be a yoke of bondage. And it never is a yoke of bondage. But when man adds to it, man wants to add all these rules and regulations to what God has said. And then we miss the point of what God was trying to tell us. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 14, 4, Where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increase is by the strength of the ox. So God says you, can, you can't have it both ways. All right? You can't have your increase and not have any mass. If you, so if you don't have any mass, you don't have any increase. In other words, you can keep, keep your house nice and clean if you don't have any stuff. All right? Your house can be spotless if you have nothing there. Your cupboards can be clean and your sink can be clean if you've got nothing to eat off, if you've got no food. But we see but the much increases by the strength of the ox. So if you want to have oxen to work your farm, expect to have mess. So if we're going to do work, we're going to have to have some cleanup. But that's why it says that. Where there are no oxen, the crib, where no oxen are, the crib is clean. But much increase is by the strength of the ox. So just like if we're going to work, we're going to have to do some cleaning up. If we, don't, if we want to be clean all the time, then there's no work to be done. There'll be no food and you'll die. 1 Corinthians 9 gives us something interesting. Verse 9, it says, For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Doth God take care for oxen? So here Paul says this and Timothy says it as well and quotes these Old Testament scriptures. And why? Because he's basically saying it and he says the laborer is worthy of his hire is basically what they're saying in this way. That if the, if the ox is going to be doing a job, let him eat. You know, if you're going to, if you're going to be working and, um, and doing something, you need to eat. Yes, you need to have water. So if this oxen are threshing the corn or threshing the wheat or whatever it is all day long, and they're not eating, it's like running your car and not putting any fuel in it. It's not going to happen. Or working a whole day and not eating or drinking. So you let, the, you let the oxen eat as they go so that they, can, they, they get paid, basically, for food, for doing it. And it keeps them going. It, keeps, it supports their needs in this way. And it's a valuable lesson for us to learn because people that would borrow oxen would sometimes would muzzle the oxen to stop the oxen eating some of their grain. But then what happens? It's like borrowing somebody's car, using all the fuel, and returning it back to them and not putting any fuel in it. It's not right. It's wrong, but people do that, right? So it's a lesson to be learned that, that um, in this way from many things, that, that the oxen give great strength. But again, if you want the great strength, you've got to feed it. You've got to take care of it with anything that we do. Anything that we want to do, we're going to have to take care of it. Now, there's a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of amazing things about the cow that it can do uh, and what it does, how it remembers its name, how it turns grass, green grass, into white milk. That's pretty cool. You know, I've always thought that's pretty cool. And uh, uh, no pun intended, cool. But, uh, um, but we see the cow and we see the calf and how it remembers all these things. An amazing thing that God created for this. And again, maybe sometime we'll look at ruminants and we'll look at how amazing that they are and what they can do and how God uh, made the ruminants as opposed to other mammals or reptiles in this way. So, amazing thing the cow is, and I hope you've enjoyed that tonight. Right, let's pray.
Gracious Heavenly Father, again, we come to you tonight. Lord, we come in the name of Jesus. Thank you for creating the cow, Lord, and, and letting us be able to see the amazing things that of your creation and how it's perfectly able to just eat nothing but grass. Uh, Lord, survive fine on that and, and be able to produce milk and then from that butter and cheeses and, and many other things. Lord, we, we give you praise for that. We thank you for this time tonight. Be with us and bless us. Give us safety as we travel home. In Jesus' name, for sake, amen and amen.